Hey everyone, Joe here. On today's video blog, we did something a little different. I managed to interview Kelly Hurley, who is an Olympic uh, uh, fencing medalist. Um, this was the first time that I ever interviewed someone before, and uh, listening back to our interview, I realized I made a lot of a lot of rookie errors. Um, I would use a lot of filler words while I was talk while while she was talking. Um, and it kind of takes away from the interview a little bit because listening to it back, it sounds like I'm sort of interrupting her. Um, while in real life, it was just a, a normal conversation. But when it's only the audio, it sounds uh, it sounds a little off-putting. But I hope you don't let that uh, dissuade you from listening to today's video blog. There's a lot of really good information from a fantastic athlete, and I think there's a lot to learn and take away from this interview. So please enjoy. On today's video blog, I'm joined by Kelly Hurley, a twice Olympic fencer. Um, she competed in the 2008 and 2012 Olympics. Uh, Kelly, I looked at some of your awards and accolades, and there were a lot. So I just kind of picked out the ones that stood out to me. Um, it looks like in 2015, you got a gold at the USA Fencing National Championships. You got a gold at the Pan American Championships in a team event. You then went ahead and got silver um, at the Pan American Championships in an individual event. Um, in 2012, you got the bronze at the Olympic Games. And then in 2008, you're the NCAA champion representing Notre Dame. Yeah. Very impressive. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> um, let's start off. Why don't you just tell me a little bit about your journey with fencing? How are you introduced to it? And what appealed to you about fencing? Well... Um, my sister also fences. Mm -hmm. She's two and a half years younger than me. Okay. Um, my father and my mother are coaches, actually. They met in fencing. Okay. All right. So it was sort of like um, something we were going to pick up at some point. Okay, in our whether lives. you liked it or not. Yeah, whether they liked it or not. <laughs> my dad is obsessed with it. He would okay. eat, breathe, and sleep fencing. Interesting. Um, so it's actually. Um, yeah, it's actually a very interesting way to go about the sport. Just, uh, yeah. just constantly breathing it, you know. Um, but yeah, so I guess when, when, uh, when we were about eight years old, we started fencing mm -hmm. and, um, really like my mom and dad never had any sort of plan for us. I mean, they just wanted us to get active in something and get involved in the sport that they, that they knew. And, uh, but eventually Courtney and I both became extremely good and we got yep. full scholarships to Notre Dame, both of okay. us. And that's where it really just snowballed. It's just, Interesting. Would you say that fencing fencing is a is a family affair? Do you feel like a lot of the fencers you meet, it kind of runs in the family a little bit? Um, no, actually, uh, I would say Courtney and I are sort of unique in that in that way. Uh, there's a lot of kids that fence, and their parents, even though they you know take them to practice and whatnot, they don't mm. know anything about fencing. Their okay. parents are absolutely clueless. Um, most of the time, they're just annoying the people, yep. the, the kids. So uh, <laughs> everyone always complains about their parents, like not knowing what's going on. Okay. Right. So I'd say our parents are a little unique in that way. Yeah, very interesting. Um, so at, at what point did you decide to, to commit to, this, to the sport of fencing? At what point did you realize that I might have a career with this, I might have a future with this? Probably when I was like 14, uh, I won the junior, junior division is, um, is 19 and under yeah. age group. Okay. Um, so I was 14 and okay. I won the junior, okay. which was, I think I was the youngest person to have ever won the junior, I think it was the national championships. Yeah. So this was... 27 now so how many years ago so right, so right when that happened yeah. um, my mom and dad started putting me into World Cups okay so I started um, so I started traveling okay and uh, I got some great like cadet results because uh, there's there's three divisions there's the cadet division mm -hmm. which is 16 and under or 17 and under uh, juniors which is 19 and under mm -hmm. and then the seniors which is everyone okay um, uh, we had to be at least 14 defense in the senior division so anyways I was involved in cadets and juniors and um, so I started traveling to World Cups after I won that junior title, and I started doing really well. And then um, so I started looking at colleges, and everyone was offering me a full scholarship. So Interesting. Yeah, I was right around 14, 15 years old. I, I pretty much uh, committed to the sport. Okay. Um, what type of I, – I call them fencing divisions, but, but I don't mean the, uh, the cadet or juniors. I mean, like, what sort of fencing events are there? And how are they different from each other? Right, so there's three disciplines. Okay. There's the foil, the saber, and the epee. Okay. Uh, they're separated by rules, um, point control, mm -hmm. uh, point control, uh, uh, target area, mm -hmm. um, as well as type of blade. Uh, 
Okay. So the foil and the epe have a, a button at the end okay. that needs to be compressed in order to go off. Okay, that's, make... that's on your sword. Right. That's on your... So I fence okay. epe. Okay. Um, epe is the most um, popular of all the weapons because yeah. it makes the most sense. It's the easiest to understand. And, okay. and it, um, it derives from um, the, uh, the sport back in the day whenever it was to the death. You know, mm -hmm. like, um, okay. Yeah, so that, I, <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that right. yeah, that's where, because the whole body is targets. I okay. the whole body is targets uh, okay, okay. anywhere. So even like the ankle or foot, you right. could go for, okay. But right. it's all one point. It doesn't You don't get like two points for going okay. to like an ankle or something. Yeah, yeah. So no matter where you hit, if your light goes off, um, you get a touch. Okay. Um, and foil um, is also, you need to compress, so in order to compress the button, you have to poke, right? Like directly, yeah. like hit somebody. Okay. Saber is a, a slapping weapon. Okay. So, I mean, I think it originated from jousting. Okay. Uh, so basically you just run and slap each other. It doesn't make much sense to me. Don't ask me to explain it. Okay. All I know is the torso and up is the target. If you hit anywhere below that, uh, it's an off target light. It doesn't count. Okay. It's pointless. Um, also uh, right of way is a big deal. So the referee has a lot of like uh, power. Okay. So he determines whether he thinks you're the attack or not. And mm, okay, so, so, so right really of way. Complicated. Is this in Sabre or is this in Epic? It's in both Sabre and Foil. Okay. No Epic, not an Epic. Not an Epic, okay. That's why Epic is so easy to understand. If okay. your light goes off, you get the touch. Okay. If Foil and Sabre, if your light goes off, it does not mean you get the touch. Okay. I, I just want to revisit the button thing. Sure. You, you have to physically press the button as you're contacting mm -hmm. someone, and then it sounds like an electrical pulse. Yeah, right. there's, a, there's a wire that runs up your blade, mm -hmm. and then uh, you are uh, wearing a, a body wire. So yeah. that connects into your blade, goes, runs down your uniform, connects to the end of the strip at a box, yeah. and that box connects up to a, a light. Okay. So you can press the button, light goes off. Okay. All right. Yeah, so I'm wearing like a wires. All right, very interesting. Right. Um, and you said Epe just made the most sense to you. Yeah, I, actually, I, I learned defense foil first. Foil okay. is like more of a practice weapon for Epe, okay. although it developed into its own weapon. Okay, okay. People took it too seriously. Different, different blades, different types of blades. Uh, yes, different okay. types of blades. The foil is like very flimsy and um, okay. really easy to like flick around. I see. Epe I see. is much heavier. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So the foil mostly, and foil is just the torso, so um, just the body. It yeah. was actually uh, developed, at, like I said, as a practice weapon for Epe to like, um, for like the dual weapon, you know, back when sure. they were killing people. Okay, yeah. You want to aim for the organs, right? Okay, yeah. Those are the most important parts that were uh, to, to hit. So it was like more just working on point control. Okay. To hit like the, the things that would I kill see. you. I so, see. but then it became its own weapon because, you know, okay. it's just the way it worked out. Very <laughs> um... So I, I watched a few a few of your videos. Um, huh. I didn't really understand the strategy of fencing, and maybe you could kind of talk about the sure. sort of uh, what what is advantageous, what is the purpose, uh, what is not advantageous. What do you kind of yeah. go for during the game? Well, fencing is unique, uh, just like any other um, combat sport, mm -hmm. where you're fencing or you're you're competing against the person in front of you. You know, there's you're mm -hmm. not really competing against the clock, so. Um, so you have to figure out the person in front of you. It's a mental game as well as a physical game. Okay. It's almost 50-50. Um, so it's like mental, it's like physical chess. Okay, sure. Um, so if someone, like let's say you have a particular style, whatever it is, like you like to attack a lot. Okay, all right. But the other person you're fencing um, is like amazing on defense for whatever reason. You have yeah. to figure out what to do. You have to change constantly, like even though you know, you have a your set and your and your game or style. You have to figure out your opponent and every touch you have to like keep like learning what's you know best to do against the person in front of you. Okay. And you only have a set amount of time to do it. So okay. so yeah, it, it's it's extremely mentally stimulating. Everyone's yeah. different. Everyone's different. I mean I can have so much trouble against one person, but my yeah. sister has absolutely no problem against that okay. same person. It's just how our styles and games match up, you know, uh, my sister and I are completely different, even though we learn from the same, my, my father. Interesting. Um, our styles are absolutely night and day. So, so maybe, I, I, maybe uh, compare and contrast your styles between you and your sister. I, I know you're left-handed, right? Yes, my, okay. I'm left-handed, my sister's right-handed. I'm a bit taller than my sister, but mm. she's quite a bit stronger. Okay. She's a, just a bigger human being. Yep. She can like really bully people. Okay. Um, 
some people have compared her to fencing like a man. Okay. Uh, so she's a lot stronger, and she like really like stays on the blade a lot. So she whacks like people's, which people don't okay. really like to have their blade wax. Like, okay. Imagine just like having something in your hand, and someone keeps like sure. hitting it, right? Sure. It's annoying as hell. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, no, that's, <laughs> uh, that's fine. So, uh, so she she does that a lot, and she's like always putting pressure on people. So I people. See. Um, uh, people have a lot of uh, a hard time against her. Okay. Me, I'm more technical and uh, I rely on my quickness and speed. Okay. Um, as well as like my creativity. Okay. Um, so I'm more like uh, a little harder to figure out. My okay. sister's like, you know, you can pretty much see where, where she's coming from. Sure. She's like a bull. Sure. And but you can me, either handle her. Or you yeah. Can't, right. Okay. Right. Interesting. So, so how 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 are you creative? Can you give me a couple examples um, of, of maybe? Do you mix it up every game? Do you, I do adapt you, a lot you faster. Adapt. Okay. Yeah, uh, like I, I can usually pick apart my opponent a little bit quicker than my sister. Uh, she, she can't really adjust as quickly as I can. I mean, yeah. she can, but yeah. Um, but that's that's mostly what I do. And and I, I'm a lot, um, just a lot quicker. Okay. Like I can like you know move in a lot faster. Sure. Kind of like, I don't know. It's it's hard to explain. Sure. You have no, to like I, watch it. I, no, I completely understand. Uh, do you feel like this was a learned ability? This uh, your yeah. ability to to adapt. Do you, do you feel like do you feel like you weren't good at it and you were frustrated because you weren't good at it and um, then you decided to become better at that? I'm constantly specific? updating my game. I have okay. to say that for the let's see how many years I've been fencing, like 15 years I've been fencing. Yeah. My style, I feel like, has evolved and adapted. Mm -hmm. 20,000 different times like okay. I, I keep adding new moves and then taking away other moves and like working on certain things and my point control gets better and then it gets worse because I stop training for whatever yeah. reason or or I get injured when, and when you say point control you mean aiming for a specific target right like, like okay. uh, being able to hit yeah a specific target like um, you know like my like hand shots my flick shots or my like going down to the thigh you have to have pretty good accuracy to be able to, to do that to pull yeah. that stuff off as well as strength and um, um, conditioning and whatnot so okay. So really, actually, my game relies extremely um, on my uh, on my conditioning. Okay. The the better shape I am, the yep. quicker I can move, and the, yeah, the yeah, more you can execute. The more I can execute yeah. exactly. Um, let's let's talk about how you uh, keep on evaluating your game. Now, is it is this self driven? Uh, do you feel like you do you feel like this comes from you internally? Do you feel like your coach? Kind of drives you to do that, um, and and how do you do that? Do you do that through video? Do you do that through internal reflection? Uh, I I'd say it's a mixture of all uh, of all the above. I don't do video, which I uh, my coach, my new coach, uh, he's not my dad was my coach growing up, but okay. um, now that we're uh, my dad's also eighty two years old, so he's, okay. he's a bit older. He can't yeah. really give us lessons anymore. Um, I gotcha. So now we've moved on to a, the the national coach, the head national coach. That's why I moved here to Houston actually. Okay. To train with him. So now that I'm training with him, he has you know different ideas, and um, he's uh, working with me on other things, and and um, I'd say like the reason I've adapted my game as many times as I have is I'll be doing something and then I'll start losing with whatever I'm doing. Yeah. I get really frustrated and upset. Okay. And so I'll just like reevaluate my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> I get really upset. No, no. I... <laughs> when I start losing at like all these World Cups and oh, whatnot, no, I'm sure. I, I'll start to think like, well, I need to add something or take something away. And it's pretty much just the losing that, that makes okay. me want to adapt. I see. Okay. The frustration. The okay. frustration. The struggle. Very interesting. <laughs> that is really interesting to me that you that you've never used video before. Do you feel like a lot of fencing athletes on your level are using video? Yes, I do. I think it's something we need. And actually, until recently, my sister and I never took one-on-one um, -on -one lessons mm -hmm. with our coach. That's where you uh, you work. Um, you know, it's almost like you're fencing your coach, but he's giving you certain moves to work on and to mm -hmm. hit him. He's like a dummy, basically. Okay. Uh, my sister and I never took lessons until we were, uh, until I was out of college. I never mm -hmm. took lessons, and and some people, some uh, most fencers would think that's insane, mm -hmm. because most fencers take like two lessons a day, okay. every day. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, really, my sister and I just kind of relied on our, um, like natural athletic ability. Sure. And uh, now that um, we're more and more involved in the sport. Um, to move up, to get past this, you know, wall that we're at, we have to go the extra level, and and that's uh, taking lessons and probably watching video yeah. will be required. So, okay. so my sister and I have been kind of like sitting at this point without like working too too hard. You know, we're naturally good, but you know, to break that break past that there's, point, yeah, there's, there's, there's a, things there's that we're that could be broken, yeah. right? Okay, interesting. 
So um, let's let's talk a little bit about your technique um, and how you how you train for your technique. Um, are there are there uh, movements and patterns that you memorize, or or is it purely on the fly mm -hmm. based on instinct, or is it a combination of both? Um, well, in the lesson that we take, the mostly the lessons are what work on our point control. Mm -hmm. uh, so like our coach will have us go, you know, certain moves against them to like hit the thigh or hit the foot mm -hmm. or hit the hand, mm -hmm. and that really like. Really, the more strengthened your hand is, the okay. more like act, like the more you're able to move your blade more and more, right. okay. which helps with point control. So, um, so like that's really helped. And what was the rest of the question? Um, so, uh, do you do you memorize any movements or patterns? Right. Uh, so yeah, most of it's on most of it's on the fly. Like okay. um, so, he'll give us a whole bunch of moves yeah. uh, to put in our arsenal, and then like once we come up against somebody, depending on how they fence we figure out what works best. Okay. So really it's like whatever feels better against any type of individual. Yeah. So so you so you might go to a competition and you square off against a girl that you have no idea how she fences. Okay. And then literally on the fly you have to figure out right. how what her technique is, what her strengths are, what her exactly. weaknesses are. Interesting. Yeah. Do you ever do you ever get panicked that you might never never figure that out in time and you might lose? Or do you feel like this, again, is like a learned ability of that's definitely That's definitely the biggest struggle of being a fencer, like how yeah. quickly you can figure it out. Or, okay. you know, any particular day, anyone can be anybody. So maybe I can't figure it out today, but I'll yeah. be able to figure it out tomorrow. Interesting. Um, yeah, it's really, that's probably like <laughs> most, the biggest struggle about okay. fencing is that right. every day is different. Yeah, I, I can see how... How it's you know. Sometimes your brain physical. is like super on and fired, right. and like right. it's like, oh, I know exactly what to do. But yeah. other days, it's like, oh my god, <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> Very cool. Um, all right, so so let's let's talk a little bit about uh, your training. Um, day to day, you kind of mentioned there's there's a lot of um, point attacks. Am I, am I saying that correctly? Uh, touches. Point, touches, yeah. right? So a lot of touches. Um, so that's obviously the the technique side of it. There's also a bit of strength training in there. Um, what what other what other conditioning do you do uh, uh, on, on a weekly basis? Yeah, for me, um, depending on how sore I am, mm -hmm. I usually try and run every okay. day. I have my my dog to help motivate me with that. Okay, she makes me run. Um, but if I'm like too sore, which at the moment I definitely am, uh, swimming is also really good. Okay. Like I can really tell the difference when I've been swimming every day. Mm -hmm. Like my shoulders, and my arms feel stronger, and I mm -hmm. feel less sore. It really helps with um, with loosening up and. All, t all together just being able to like breathe and move better on the strip so I yeah. mean it makes a big difference like swimming and running or doing weights or whatever just mm. just definitely just doing something other than just fencing helps okay all right so so a lot of your training is is kind of fencing yeah fencing oriented that's yeah. how you develop the strength that's right how you develop the technique that's okay. the best type of training to do for fencing is fencing okay but I mean, it's are, not the are, only you, one. are you just in a lunging position most of the time? Just <laughs> kind of lunging backwards and forwards? Yeah, that... I do like a million squats a day. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's just like moves up to like a million two, so I'm like a little <laughs> sore. <laughs> I gotcha. Um, as far as like flexibility goes or mobility goes, is there anything that you work on specifically or do you feel like uh, you're kind of naturally flexible and you kind of yeah. have the mobility you need? I'm naturally flexible. My sister is not. Okay. Like I can do. I've been able to do the split since I was like 12. Okay. My sister can barely touch her toes. Okay. So it like, it's, yeah, we're so different. Okay. <laughs> and I, I definitely think flexibility, if nothing else, it helps with, uh, with injury, with avoiding yep. injury. Yeah. I've really never had any serious injuries. Okay. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so let's keep hoping for that. All right. Um, so that was actually my next question. Have you, if I asked you what was the biggest challenge you faced during your, uh, you know, 15 year career? What would be the first thing that came to mind? Well, I'd say just um, there's a few obstacles I've come across. One, my biggest one I struggle mm -hmm. with right now is lack of motivation. Okay. I've uh, I've sort of lost the fire. Okay. I really, I've been doing like I said, I've been doing this for 15, 16 right. years, right? Um, intensively, like uh -huh. with my family, eat, breathe, sleep. You know, it's all I ever do. Yeah. Um, can't really do much else when you're training all the time. Right. You know, I, I don't have time to go to school, I don't have time to get a job, you know, which most people would think that's awesome. Yeah. But after a while, like I would like to be a normal human being. Okay. And like go to med school, which is something I'd like to do. Okay. And um, yeah, it just um, I've wanted to also just competing all the time. Like yeah, yeah, having yeah. to it's taxing, win. Right? Yeah, yeah, having it's to want like yeah. to want to win and 
And it's just, it gets exhausting. And more than anything, it's mentally exhausting okay. for me. Um, so that's, that's currently what I'm super struggling with. Okay. Because uh, especially after the last Olympics, I got a bronze. You know, I feel like I should, like, I should quit after yeah. that. Well, I'm on top, right? Yeah. Or like third on top. Yeah. <laughs> it's still pretty on top. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like I should have just quit right there because it's not going to get much better than that. I mean, so I think uh, I really, really wanted to quit and was looking forward to quitting after the last Olympics. Okay. Cause, uh, because, because... Also, because my season leading up to that was so bad. It was yeah. so bad. And the coach at the time, it's a different coach than now, mm -hmm. um, is a backstabbing jerk. And okay. <laughs> uh, he made my life hell. Okay. And so that, combined with the worst season of my life, really right, burnt right. me out. Yep. Really, really burnt me out. And I was looking forward to quitting after that. But my parents and my sister all kind of like put pressure on me to keep going. Mm -hmm. And... So I just felt like I had to keep going, and that's what I've been struggling with. It's okay. really just like right. keeping myself going. Interesting. Well, it's, I mean, you've managed to do it for four years, <laughs> and uh, 2016 is right around just the corner. One more year. Yeah. <laughs> Half a year, actually. All right. So, so, so good. No injury. Um, a bit Nothing of burnout. Nothing too bad. Have you ever, um, have you ever experienced? Uh, you, you said that after you lose, you know, lose at a competition, you kind of rethink your entire life. Have you ever, <laughs> have you ever gone through like an extended period where you just completely doubt your skills oh my god yeah especially when I was younger um when I was like more dramatic like mm. 18 19 20 I can't tell you how many times I would like lose and be like oh, I'm gonna quit that's it I'm done with this yeah. I'm done with it forever yeah but you know I have to keep going and yeah and uh yeah I've definitely like reevaluated my life so many times because of fencing and my sister is a hundred times worse than me she's like extremely competitive and okay. horribly horribly sore loser yeah so she you know so many tears <laughs> so many tears over just like a simple loss yeah no, now I now i accept losing i mean it's part of the game okay <laughs> you're gonna lose yeah so that's so, so that that was actually my next question was what what does losing feel like to you um right now now uh i'm definitely in a different extremely different mindset than when i was like before like pre-college mm -hmm. now I accept it like I said as part of the it's just part of the game you know some people are gonna match up badly and your brain is on or it's not and or your legs are on and they're not or yeah it's really just you know any given day anyone can beat anybody like there was okay. a day where I beat the Olympic champ followed by the second Olympic champ mm -hmm. followed by a girl I've never beaten before because I've had so much trouble with her and then there's other days where I lose the freaking beginners like okay. it's just it's so now I just I've accepted it and it's not really that big of a deal to me anymore, especially because I don't even want to be out there anyways yeah. at the moment. So really, it's not that big of a deal to me at the moment. But my sister, oh my gosh, she she does not like to lose. So so would you say you developed? Uh, I I don't want to put you know words in your mouth, but would you say you developed a uh, sort of like a long term? Yeah, long -term uh, perspective <laughs> yeah. on, on right as long as you win like fifty one percent of your games, uh, right? That's that's successful. Yeah. Or sixty percent of your games. Yeah, pretty much. That's successful. Okay. Yeah, winning more than losing was uh, is always um, welcomed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't keep at it if I was losing more than I was winning. Okay. For sure. Um. So so right now you kind of mentioned that you're going through a, a bit of a uh, uh, motivational dry spell. Yeah. Um. But when you Let's let's compare and contrast what what is keeping you motivated now, and let's compare that to maybe five or six years ago when you were highly motivated. Uh -huh. um, what's keeping me motivated now is I'm part of the American team, the mm -hmm. U.S. team, and I'm first or second in the U.S. at the moment. My okay. sister and I switch off. Um, oh, okay. It's your sister that. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, we're not competitive towards each other anymore. Yeah. Definitely not anymore. Um, uh, so really, uh, the team like depends a lot on my sister and I because we're the two best right. sisters in the U.S. Right. by far, and so I can't quit the team okay. because if I quit the team, I'm quitting on my sister basically. Okay, I see. I can't do that. Um, I also can't let down my mom and dad, and so I, I'm basically in it for them. <laughs> okay. And also, it's just a way to sort of keep the fat off. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, <laughs> and uh, to not jump into adulthood too quickly. Yep. You know, no Fair rush. Enough. So that that's that's now and back when I was younger, I was thirsty for an Olympic medal. Okay. That's what I always dreamed of. Yeah. And you know now that I have it, I think that's why my motivation is really okay. just and that's hit and the that's floor. Completely fair. I don't think that's <laughs> I don't think that's uncommon. Uh, I so I, I know in beach volleyball, um, there will be you know a team that I mean the the 2012 German team is a prime example. They 
uh, Brink and Reckerman, they ended up winning the, the gold medal for, for the 2012 Olympics in, in beach volleyball and immediately just announced their retirement. I mean, literally like, uh, you know, a month <laughs> after. And that like... was probably the plan, whether they medal or not, you know. So I, I don't think that's too uncommon. <laughs> um, that's a great idea. Yeah. Quit while you're on top. Yeah. Um, last few questions here. Um, do you feel like you have mastered the sport of fencing, especially uh, FA, which is your chosen? Um, definitely not. No. no, I don't think anyone will ever master fencing. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are days where you feel like you've mastered fencing, but mm -hmm. the next day, um, you know, people will make you their bitch. So yeah. it's just really, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's such a, um, it's a sport that constantly, you know, uh, mentally stimulating and you're constantly, I mean, that's what makes it for me actually the only other reason why I can like hang in there is because it actually is quite interesting to be yeah. able to fence people and everyone's different. And so, you know, nothing's, it's not like, Swimming, where you just swim right. back and forth a million right. times, and running, where you know it's the same. Every, like you're constantly like trying to figure out your opponent. So like it's it's interesting. Okay. Even though okay. even though I'm tired of competing, I actually like defense. Mm -hmm. It's just I'm tired of trying to win. I gotcha. I understand. <laughs> and prove myself, you know, over and over again. Yes. Yeah. Gets exhausting. Completely understand. <laughs> um, just outside of fencing, and you can you can relate this question to fencing or or not, but. What does the word mastery mean to you? Um, I feel like it's an idea of perfection that uh, is that people that people feel is reachable, but I I don't see how it's reachable. I mean, especially in the specific sport that I'm in, maybe something like running, like Usain Bolt, maybe he's reached like he's a master of it. Mm -hmm. But other than like special cases or or Phelps, you know, Michael Phelps, right. he you can probably consider him a master of swimming. Sure. I don't think there's much else that they can learn, but something like fencing or, or karate or anything where like you know any individual can beat you I, mm -hmm. I feel like it's sort of like a like a made-up sort of idea okay very interesting yeah um, okay so besides the the skills and, and techniques specific to fencing what has the process of becoming one of the best fencers in the world taught you any life lessons or um, sort of valuable takeaways or it's humbling okay you know, like you know, you think you're so good, you know, but then uh, you travel to a World Cup and fence like actual good people and, yep. you know, you realize that you actually kind of suck and <laughs> like, so yeah, like it's constantly like bringing you back down to, uh, <laughs> to earth. So okay. yeah, I'd, I'd say it's definitely, uh, it definitely made me, um, yeah, it, it's hard to explain. I, I would definitely be an extremely different person if I had never picked up fencing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, putting all your time and effort into into one thing, and traveling all over the world as as much as I've traveled, I've been to almost I don't know, I've been to so many countries. Mm -hmm. You learn a lot, and um, you talk to so many people, and you meet so many people, and you have to learn languages, and or at least like attempt them. And I don't know, it, you really uh, I feel like it's really a a way to mature like okay. a lot quicker than uh, okay. than normal like a bunch of my friends have never even been out of San Antonio yeah so um, I feel like I just feel like I know and I'm able to like get around a lot better than sure. a lot of people sure some confidence yeah, yeah. so so it, it's yeah it's a it's a good experience I I'm glad I did it for sure but awesome um, and then final question uh, you, you've kind of we've talked about this a little bit throughout the interview but what are your plans for the future six months from now uh, a year from now five years from now well, six, on, six months from now, I think, is right around Olympic time, so just to get that Olympics over with. So you're, you're for sure, you're, um, you're, in the, well, you're on the U.S. team, so that means for sure you're Nothing's you for sure, okay. yeah. So I could go ahead and explain the, uh, the way you qualify. That's, like, pretty complicated, actually. Okay. So I'll just, like, um, I'll just trim it down to, like, okay. uh, there's... Uh, you're in the process of qualifying. Yeah, so there's, okay. there's eight World Cups. They started in May okay. of last year. Um, my sister and I did really well at a few of them right off the bat, which is like night and day from my last Olympic experience where I didn't do well at anything. Uh, <laughs> so this was really reassuring. Um, yeah. So really, I've just been kind of like surfing on a plateau at the moment. I really, okay. I really don't have to worry about much because like I said, I did do really well. Yep. So I'm sort of like really far ahead at the moment. Okay. But 
um, as I learned from the last Olympics, uh, anybody can come up out of nowhere <laughs> and surprise, yeah. get an amazing result, the best result of their entire freaking lives, yeah. and like just make the Olympics, just out of nowhere. Okay. Uh, it happened at the last Olympics, and I am definitely um, not like turning my back and like, like I, I am totally aware of anyone behind me. So the final competition is in, or the final qualifying competition is in March. Okay. So by March, it'll be for sure. My sister and I do have, like, we're like way ahead, but okay. like I said, I was, because of the last Olympics, it was, yeah. it was a scarring, a scarring season for me. Yeah. I like, I never let anyone, I never like, you know, count anyone out. There's okay. always a chance. All right. So, but but we are looking good, yeah. Okay. I, I don't know how many times I've like knocked on wood this year, just <laughs> because my coach is like convinced everything's fine. Yeah. He's trying to jinx it. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> so it's looking good, but you know, you never know. You never know. Yeah. And then uh, and then after fencing, you think after the oh yeah, so a year. Um, first thing I plan on doing after the Olympics is going on a skiing adventure. Okay. Because when you're, um, you know, fully committed to a sport, you really can't be doing anything that could like Potentially hurt you. Yeah. yeah. I have a friend who actually went skiing, um, and she blew out her ACL and okay. she had to quit. She was really good too, so it was really sad. So yeah, anything. I mean, any even playing basketball, like you know, twisting your ankle. I mean, how stupid would you feel if that's what ended your right. career? You oh, know? absolutely. Yeah, yeah, so I'm really careful of my life. Until then, and after then, after a year, yeah, probably trying to go to med school. Like I said, I really, okay. really want to. I need to take that stupid MCAT, but <laughs> that's that's the challenge in itself. I that's think that's the plan. <laughs> well, uh, New adventure. Yeah. Well, that's all the questions I have for you. Thanks for yeah. thanks for doing this. I feel like uh, yeah. I, it's it's been great just being able to to pick your mind a little bit. Well, good questions. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, like I said, the first time doing this, um, and you were great too. You made it made it very easy for me. So. Oh well, thank you. I tried. <laughs> I've had um, a few interviews, but okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure this is not your first time. Not so. my first, but um, guys, this was me and uh, Kelly Hurley uh, talking about her experience as an Olympic fencer. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned a few things. Thanks.